Uh, what I was going to say though is if I'm standing here, my head's right here, so it probably it would be right there about the bottom. So think about if you're working over here and you're needing to do something, is that going to be a good height for you too? Or do you want to do about halfway down from that so you're not smacking your head as bad, but or do you think you smack your head? The tape, the credit the tape measure, see how far that is away from the laser? Right about a foot, which would be normal for an eight foot ceiling. Now from the cabinet down to the green line, that's only 10 inches. They'd be lower than that if we had eight foot ceilings. I said we just drop it down to a line. Will you help me this time? Screw it one handed. Yeah, I think that's best. Okay, I'll take you to go get something to eat now. As long as you won't get nothing done. Hangry! You're always hangry. You feed me. All right, so here's a cool trick that my grandfather taught me for cutting corrugated metal, which we're about to do. Take your blade off your saw, which is reverse threads. I always forget. Now take your good blade, set it off to the side, grab one of your old blades, and put it on backwards. And there you go. The reverse blade will actually cut through this corrugated metal like butter. If your blade's turned around the other way, you're probably just going to catch it and hang and it's going to jack it all up. But with the blades backwards, just like butter. It is going to be loud though, so I'd wear air protection if you have it. I have it. Somewhere. In a box. Is there still packing? Go away by the others. There's a good pole piece. Klaus is over there around the corner. I don't know if you can see him. He's over there. But Jugs are due rescue. Right? He's still learning. Go lead I don't want you to run the shop stuff. Cool. I'm trying to use as much reclaim stuff as I can on this project to save money, and then plus the reclaim stuff looks cool. Buddy, you're just being hard headed. But the biggest thing I was worried about is I wanted to make sure that the corrugated metal wasn't going to stick out further than my bottom trim piece. I didn't know if I could get away with just using a one by or if I'd need a two by. But it looks like the one by is going to work just fine. Now, I have seen some people, they'll put the corrugated metal on the wall first, and then they'll put the wood in front of it. I don't want to do that just because I don't want to go through and fill all these holes. And if I don't fill all these holes, there's going to be crud get down in there. And I, with sanding and working in here and cutting stuff, I don't want all these just getting filled with junk. So I'd rather just have a dead spot for it to stop so nothing can get down behind it. Okay, so just attaching it to the frame like I thought, is it going to work? Um, I was worried about that, but I figured I'd give it a try. With these panels being so warped and they're just aged and they've been in storage and everything else, I thought I could screw them in and they'd kind of straighten themselves out, but they're not. They're still dipping into the insulation. You can see gaps. So we'll just pull the bottom boards off. Nice part about using screws. And we'll put a backing back there. And then we'll attach everything to the backing. Should be all good. All right, so my cuts were a little off on a couple of the pieces. Just with these being so curved like this, it's kind of hard to cut it. So I'm gonna have to figure out a better method of making sure I get a nice square straight line for the rest of them. Because I plan on doing this all the way around the shop. But we're gonna have upper trim that will go on the front and then cap the top. So I'm not that concerned about it. I can hide it, but man, that sure is gonna add a lot of character in here. 
Can't wait to get all those cabinets painted and done up all industrial looking. But down the road, we just need to get back to work right now. Back to building stuff. All right, guys, pretty much got the rest of the lower walls done. Got particle board put there. Still need I was hoping to just be able to give you all kind of a final look of the lower wall, but as you can see, we just have stuff everywhere. All this stuff needs to be pushed up against the walls to start getting organized. It has just become a chaotic mess in here. Now, this, of course, would have been a whole lot easier if I could have done all of it before we had to move all the stuff in here, but we got to work with what we got. I'm sure y'all can see where we have our cuts and where we put screws in. There's bare wood showing. I'm going to wait until the entire wall is complete, and then I'm going to come back through, and I'm going to touch that all up with stain, and then I'm going to seal everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything. Even the corrugated metal, I'm going to seal that because it has rust on it. So I'm going to go ahead and put a, an enamel clear coat over it, probably a matte finish, so it's not noticeable, but it'll be sealed up so we don't have just rust out here that the dogs are rubbing up against or getting it on our clothes or anything. I did get a little bit more cabinets put in just so I could get them off the floor, get them out of my way. They were back here where we were just working. Also, you can see back there, I'm just gonna do the entire wall in corrugated metal back there because that's gonna be my welding section and that'll protect the walls from getting burned or starting fires with it being metal, or at least that's my theory. Now make sure you stay tuned for the next episode because I think it's gonna be one of our coolest episodes. I'm actually gonna be doing an entire rustic wall on here. We're gonna use some of this actual aged barn lumber here. And we're gonna use some of the new lumber I picked up in the back and make it look aged. And we're gonna stagger it and stack it, get really creative with it. Never done it before, hope it turns out good, but I think it's gonna be really neat. Now I got the idea for doing this. If y'all watch my last build video where I built the coffee bar and I did the doors on the front of the coffee bar, I'm gonna use that same technique, but, but do this entire wall.
with that rustic lumber. And then my final thing, y'all see I did these lights up here. I plan on putting somehow, I'm going to either laser cut or plasma cut my logo and have it right there. So whenever I complete furniture and need to post photos of it up for sale, I can put it here and it'll have my company name right behind it. It'll be kind of a nice decorative staged area for the furniture. So that's coming next, so stay tuned.